This is a closer look at my Necroset jig, which has been in a couple of videos, but hasn't been in one recently. This is nothing more than a pony clamp, a bar clamp. It's got um, a pad on this end that's held on by friendly plastic. And you know, you could, um, you could make something fancier. You can make something on your bench fancier, but this thing works great. I've got marks on the bench, so I can set that in there, clip it in. And I can uh, be ready to drop a guitar in here. So I'll move that up to here. Move that up to there. Good enough. This is a call made out of friendly plastic. Friendly plastic is a plastic that you can drop it into hot water and you can mold it to do things. Um, this call is supposed to fit the heel. It doesn't work that way in practice because when you put pressure on the back, it actually pivots back. So you're not getting pressure on the whole part. You're only getting pressure on this little little part right here. You could easily cut a wooden V and pat it and do the same thing. Well, here's our victim. This is the HD28 we're working on. Uh, this has the saddle that I pretty much want. That's 145, thousands of an inch tall. And what I'm gonna do is put the neck in here. Hold it together. Oh, we got to put padding over here. Hold on a sec. Pad that bar clamp up. In fact, what I need is this bag right here. There we go. I hold the guitar stable and protects it from the bar itself. Okay, put the guitar in. Bring the clamp back. Put this in here, put it on the heel. We just snug that down. This goes on the neck block, or I'm sorry, the tail block. And I get the camera and I'll show you what this looks like. You want to get that neck up in there good and tight. Let's get the camera and move it over here and take a look around. There you go, there's a good look at it now. So that's all it is, you know? That plastic right there, there's not a lot of tension on there. There's enough to hold it. There's nothing flexible in here, so when you put some tension, um, it's gonna hold the heel up in here. There's no shims in here, and that's the whole purpose of this thing. Okay, let me grab... Here's the yardstick on the neck. It's on the body. Coming down the body right there. And you can see that the bottom of the yardstick is right about the top of the fingerboard here. Okay? That suggests to me this is going to be a pretty good neck angle. Okay, we're going to run it down the fingerboard like this. And we're going to see what falls on the bridge. And it's going to clear that bridge by quite a bit right now. In fact, it's almost at the top of the saddle. And that's fine for right now. Okay? So there's our checks. So now let's put some tension on this and see what we get. This is why when I do the strings, this is why when I do the strings, I always leave the ease on the outside. And because I use them here for alignment all the time. Put the pins in there. I think I slotted this bridge. Yeah, I slotted it already. There we go. Okay, so there's that. String wander. Okay, what I did there is just put a little bit of tension on the two E's. I'm looking at the alignment going down the neck here, and it looks pretty well aligned. You know, you could get out and measure it if you wanted to, nothing wrong with that. But my motto is, if it looks right, it is right. And I actually don't mind if the, uh, the treble E comes in. 
just a little bit more. If the treble E goes in this way, most people when they play, they tend to pull strings down rather than push them, and they tend to pull that little E off the fingerboard. Likewise, if you use your thumb for fretting, it's nicer if the low E is a little bit closer to the end. And I'm not seeing any issues with that. What I do notice right away though, is how much more nut spacing there is over here, man. That's a lot of, of space he's losing there. So I'm almost certain I'm gonna be doing a fresh nut on this guitar. And when I do that, look at the nut spacing here. And it's like way, way in over here compared to this. And so I'm gonna pull that over well, I think it looks good, and I like that alignment even better. He's losing a lot of space there. Make that a um, lot more comfortable for chords. Okay, now I happen to know from experience that when just the E's have tension on them, I'm going to see about 68 thousandths of an inch action right here. So here's 60. Let me run that and let's see what 60 looks like. Actually, 60 is pretty good. So 60 to 68 is fine. I used to run 60 all the time, and then I kind of dropped down to 68. Because I have scalloped this guitar, um, I'm kind of anticipating the action is going to rise a little bit more. And I also don't think it's quite perfectly snug right there, so that's going to raise a little bit more. Let's put a clamp on it. We're dealing with all these things as we do this video, so... Let's put a clamp on there, make sure that's down. That. Yeah. yeah, that's nice and snug now. Now I bet you I'm going to get more than 60. Oh, yeah, way more. Let's hope it doesn't go 76. 76 would be too much. No, 76 pushes it. So it's about 70 thousandths of an inch right now, which is great. Um... Let's see what the relief looks like because the truss rod is almost completely slack right now. Yeah, it's got quite a bit of relief right now. So when I take that out, the action is going to drop. Everything's looking pretty good. So in other words, when the action drops, it's going to go from um, 70 or 72 that it's at right now. It's going to drop down into 68, 66, 64 thousandths of an inch action. And all of that's fine because I'm going to adjust the saddle. I've got plenty of room to adjust the saddle. All I want is that to be between 60 and 68, you know. Anywhere in there is going to, going to work with me. The main thing, it's not overset, and I've got at least 60 right off the bat. So the neck is not too far back. If it was less than 60, like if it was around 40,000, then, <laughs> then the neck's overset. But it's not. 60 thousandths of an inch. And like I said, it's clearing it really well. It looks pretty perfect to me. So again, I happen to know from experience that if I want an action of 93 thousandths of an inch uh, with this saddle, which is the saddle height that I want. So I got the saddle height that I want. I want an action of 93 thousandths of an inch, which I'm going to adjust the saddle to get. Then under just the tension of the two E's, a little bit of tension, then this action ought to be about 60 to 68 thousandths of an inch. As it gets all of the strings and comes up to tension, it's going to come up, the top's going to come up, and everything's going to pop back up into around 90, 93, 95, which then I will then adjust with fine tuning of the saddle. But this gets me well into the ballpark, and this neck reset jig is absolutely one of the single most useful tools I have ever built. It allows me to put a guitar in here and check everything. I could string it up all the way if I wanted to. Um, there's no real need to right now because this guitar is not telling me any lies. It's Everything's looking really straightforward. But it allows me to put a guitar in here and check the tension or check the, the geometry before I put the shims on the neck. Because once I put the shims on the heel, I'm going to have to sand them down and I've got to hit my target. Bam! Right there. And at that point, you don't want to be adjusting the angle of the neck anymore. Or you're going to have to just redo all the shims. So I check the angle of my neck 
several ways using this straight edge up and down and alongside and then I check it on here and then I check the alignment and I get all that to my satisfaction before I ever put the shims in. Um, so this one's looking really good and according to the previous video the the neck heel was loose from the factory and all I really did was take that neck off clean up the glue um, I did some very very minor fitting just to get it where I like it you know and it's good to go I'm gonna put shims on there and um, I'm gonna stick it back together here in a minute so this is the neck reset jig it is so ridiculously simple it's unbelievable I put it together one day just to see if it would work or if it would be useful and that was like 20 years ago and I've never really changed it since if I had a permanent, you know, if I had room in a shop or I had a neck reset station, well, this is a neck reset station, but I use it for other things. You know, you could make a fancy one with wood and wood screws, you know, all that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm telling you, this is simple. Someday I will come back in here and make a better block because the friendly plastic tends to crack uh, and get loose. And this one's cracked here and this is a little bit loose. But... Yeah, you know, that's no big deal. I could easily get my router out. And in fact, geez, now that I thought about it, what about this? Look at that. I had an epiphany on camera. These are for the Stumac uh, fretting jig called Jaws, and they have grooves put in them with a magnet. And they are designed to fit over these pony clamps. I'll show you. Here's one right here. This is for the neck, uh, not neck, reset, fretting deal. And these are designed to slip over there like that, and that magnet holds them up. I, I never use these. And that right there <laughs> is going to work perfectly. There's another one, you know, that's for the, uh, the front which isn't going to work on this one, but it's, it's designed for clamping. So, we just had an epiphany on camera. That's going to be... And yeah, we don't have to glue it or anything because it's got this magnet on it, so it'll just slip down here like that. I can adjust it where I want it. I can put a little padding on it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Now I got a use for these things and the magnet holds it in there and it does have a little bit of, you know, movement, which is no problem with that. Moves a little bit this way. Golly.